Hey, hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. 500 here, and we're gonna do it big, bigly. And today, we're gonna be working with range, mode, median, and mid-range questions, all right? So let's go ahead and get this started here, all right? Well, first things first, we gotta understand what these things mean. And in this problem right here, we're gonna be going ahead and take a look at something called a range, all right? So uh, the five wettest places on Earth receive 467, 411, 463, 464, and 453 inches of rainfall per year. Calculate the range of these inches of rainfall. Yeah, buddy. Well, we can't do this problem unless we know what the range is, all right? So let's go ahead and take a look at what the range is. The range is really, really easy. Basically, you're gonna get your biggest value and you're gonna subtract the smallest value from it, okay? Sometimes we like to call it the max minus the min, all right? That's really what the range is, all right? Maxima minus the minimum value. Easiest way to do this problem is go ahead and take a look for the maximum and the minimum, all right? So we got 467, 411, 463, 464, and 453. Our max is gonna be 467, our min's gonna be 411. So let's go ahead and set that bad boy up. The range is going to be 467, minus 411 that's all it is that's all it is it's an easy problem once you get to the hang of how to figure out the range but you gotta know that definition you don't know that definition game over you ain't getting this one right and so we could go ahead and write 56.0 or 5.60 times 10 to the first all right both ways are correct scientific notation is where we like to put it in but sometimes you can do that standard notation, all right? As simple as that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next problem right here. Calculate the range of uh, prime numbers that are less than 100, okay? Well, we gotta know all our prime numbers here. We gotta know all our prime numbers, all right? A prime number is only divisible by one and itself. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and start searching the internet, make sure we got the list of prime numbers correct. But I kind of know a little bit about my prime numbers here. I kind of know a little bit about my prime numbers. So we could probably figure out these prime numbers here just to make sure we're on the right track, though. I want to look them up and make sure that I know that you know that I know what we're talking about here, okay? Now, a lot of people think that prime numbers are just basically odd numbers. They are not. The first prime number is actually two. And now after that, that's the only even prime number we got. But after that, we could go ahead and write all the other ones. Three, five, seven, not nine. Why not nine? Well, because we could divide nine by three. That ain't gonna work for us over here. We ain't gonna be doing nine here, okay? But guess what's next? 11. Then the number 13, okay? Then 13. Hmm, why not 15? Why not 15, ladies and gentlemen? Well, if you take a look at it, 15's not gonna be one of them because it's divisible by five. So, but 17 is, now we got 19, all right? Why not 21? Divisible by three, divisible by seven. But 23 sure is, and so is 29. 25, any, any multiple of five is not gonna be a prime number no more. 27 divisible by nine. So we got 31 coming up, not 33. 33 is a multiple of 11. Not 35, but 37 sure is. 39, multiple of 13, so it ain't. 41, 43, and then we got 47. I'm just gonna keep pop popping them straight down there. Not the 49ers! 49ers divisible by seven, one of our perfect squares, you know what I'm saying? But we do got 53. And then we do got 59, all right? 61, these are all prime numbers. Now I'm gonna go ahead and write another line here. We got 67, these are all prime numbers less than 100, all right? 71. 73, 79, 83. It's always important to know all the prime numbers less than 100, okay? Why not 81? Nine times nine, all right, nine times nine. Not 87, ain't gonna be working out for us. But 89 sure is, 89's a prime number. And then we got ourselves last, but not least, last but not least, we got ourselves 97, all right? So what we gotta do is figure out our max and our minimum here. Well, our minimum is gonna be two. Our maximum is gonna be nine. 
So we're going to go ahead and do 97 minus 2. Bust out that calculator. Bust out that bad boy right here. 97 minus 2. 97 enter. 2 divide. And I'm going to tell you right now, you put 9.50 times 10 to the first, you get it wrong. Because this is one of those special types of problems that has INT. That means we want that integer answer. Easiest way to get that integer answer is hit yellow show. Shows the yellow selection from hitting that enter button. So we hit yellow show, everything in front of the decimal is that integer. And as you can see, there's no fractional part. There's no decimal. There's no... There's no tenths, there's no hundreds, there's nothing at the decimal. The integer is a positive or negative whole number. It's a whole number that either could be positive and negative, as well as neutral. The only neutral number is zero. So in this problem, we got our range, 95. All right, let's keep it going. What is the set? What is the set? What is the range of the set, man? I need to make sure I can read correctly. I'm over here talking about the set. We're not talking about the set, we're talking about the range. The range of a set that contains all the two-digit palindromes, okay? Palindrome's a real cool word. Palindrome's a real cool word, okay? Look, I got a couple palindromes. Maybe you can see the pattern right here. We got this. This is a palindrome right here. Good old mom's a palindrome, yeah. Then we got dad. Dad's a palindrome, yeah. Wow, he's a good palindrome right there, yeah. Hmm, let's see if I can think of, you know what, one of my favorite, one of my favorite ones, race car, race car is a palindrome, yeah buddy, and one of those ones we see on the internet all the time, good old taco cat, taco cat's a palindrome, hmm, I wonder if we can see what the pattern is, pattern. Well, we got wow. It starts with the W, ends with the W. Hmm, Dad starts with the, huh, Taco K. I hope you see it. I hope you see it. I like it when kids are able to figure out patterns, okay? A palindrome is the same written forwards as it is written backwards. That's what a palindrome is, all right? So, whatever you could write going forwards is the same as you going backwards, all right? That's a palindrome, okay? Hopefully, you are able to figure that out before I had to tell you. Yeah, buddy. So, we're looking for our two-digit palindromes, all right? So, my first two-digit palindrome is 11. Then 22, same forwards as it is backwards. That's a palindrome. Then 33, 44, 55, 66, 77. 88, and of course, our last two digit, 99. So we're gonna get our maximum, which is 99, and we're gonna take away our minimum, which is 11. Bust out our calculator. Of course, some of you do that mental man. 99 enter, 11 minus, and you know it's 88, and you know it's 88, but you better not put 88. You gotta put 8.80 times 10 to the first, because this is not an integer problem. Integers, you put everything in front of the decimal, everything. This one, you gotta put your three significant digits. If you don't, then you get it wrong. But you could always put 88.0. You do that mental math, make sure you got those three significant digits. We call it a day, 88.0, all right? This is a good problem. You gotta know a little bit about that vocabulary there. But once you get that vocabulary, it's pretty easy, pretty easy. Let's take a look at the next problem. We'll calculate the range of the set of numbers that includes the square roots of the first 10 prime numbers. So yet again, it's very important to know our primes. We got two, we got three, we got five, we got seven, we got 11. Okay, that's five numbers so far, so you gotta make sure you count exactly those 10, right? Then we got 13, 17, 19, 23, not 25 divisible by 5, not 27, but of course, 29. We want to count them. Make sure, make sure we got our 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But we got to remember that it's not just about the prime numbers. It's about the square roots. So our largest prime number in this problem right here is going to be 29. And our smallest prime number is going to be 2. 
So what we got to do is get the square root of 29, because if it's the largest prime number, it's going to have the largest value for square root. And we're going to subtract the square root of the minimum prime number, which is 2. And now we're going to get our answer. So we're going to bust out our calculator, hit 29, square root time. Hit 2, square root. Subtract, it's connected, and there we go. There we have it, 3.97 times 10 to the 0. Of course, 3.97 also works. That's standard form. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's keep it going. Calculate the range of a set of prime numbers less than 100. Now, of course, Mr. Delgado, you're telling me right now, hey, I got to write all the prime numbers again. I'm going to write them all again. But if you know the vocabulary, you know it's just the maximum minus the minimum. All right? So we don't have to write them all if you already know that our minimum. What's our minimum going to be? What's the smallest prime number? Two. All right? And now we got to go into our definitions of prime numbers. And remember, prime numbers are usually even after the number two. Two's the only even prime number. Every other even number is divisible by two. So two's not going to work no more. So we don't have to check 98. It's not 99. It's a palindrome divisible by 11. But I wonder if 97 was one of them. Huh, let's see. Let's see. We could even go back on this little page. And you can even see the 97's already right there. You guys see it right there? It's right there. I'm literally right there. It's that red one right there. It's right there, right there. So our maximum prime number less than 100 is 97. So if you remember these things, you don't have to write them all. You get that speed going for you. So we bust out that calculator, 97 enter, two minus, and we get ourselves 95.0. We write that down, right? Wrong! You better not write that down. You're going to hit yellow show, and you're going to go ahead and hit 95. Anything in front of the decimal. You got to write it all. You got to write it all. That's what an integer is, and we call it a day. You better, you better not write scientific notation when you see that integer. You write that standard form. But once you got those rules, oh, man, easy. Easy nine points added to your score. Easy work right here. Easy work. Your score is going to skyrocket you do these problems, all right? Let's take a look at the next one we're even looking at in this little set. So we're going to look at this word called mode, all right? Mode. I like mode. Mode's real cool. Mode is the number that appears. Notice I wrote that number sign right there because, you know, Mr. Dugat likes to take a little shortcuts every once in a while, but you know that number sign means number. It's the number that appears the most all right so when you first start looking at these it's always good to put them in order so it's our smallest number it's three boom get that out of here now we're gonna look at our next largest number it's gonna be four we're gonna go and write that down next largest number as you can see i'm taking a look at all of these it's gonna be five we're gonna write down one and i'm gonna write down two fives five five so it looks like five seems to be leading for the mode number that appears the most all right so let's keep it go at the five is number six so let's put down that six right there but there's only one six so five still leading it after six it looks like it's seven i got one i got two sevens right there one two and then last but not least i look at eight i got one i got two i got three eights now some people think the answer is eight because the eight's the largest number it sure ain't it sure ain't it's eight because as you could see we have three eights and that's why it's eight so we're gonna go ahead and put 8.00 right wrong yet again we gotta take a look integer now we're gonna just write the number eight and we call it a day we got those points added to our score and we're getting better all right modes cake but you gotta make sure you can do the problems correctly okay okay let's do it let's do it I like this problem a lot. You may be able to tell a little bit about this problem if you know your exponents, if you know them by memory. But the easiest way to do it is if you don't know your exponents, let's go ahead and start converting these numbers. I got the number two. I got two, enter, zero, y to the x. I'm raising two to the first power. Two to the zero power, I apologize because I'm looking at my answer. And I see that anything raised to the zero po power, actually, anything, you put any number to the zero, y to the x, zero power, you can get the number one. So let's go ahead and put it down. I'm going to have one, one so far because two to the zero is one. Now we're going to go ahead and put one, enter, 
two y the x and you're gonna see what comes out right there too another one I'm gonna start grouping my numbers together so I can see which one comes out the most and we're gonna convert them all but this is good if you actually know a little bit about math you can understand that one squared was one times one which makes one so it's good to know a little bit of math now of course if you know two squared if you know two squared in your head well that's great but if you don't you hit two enter two y the x put some out my calculator I'm using my calculator right here two squared is actually four so I'm gonna put the number four down over here I'm gonna write it off to the side. Next number is a four. So now I got two fours. I got eight to the zero power. If you didn't know this, you hit eight, enter, zero, y, the x. But if you remember what I just told you right here, if you remember what I just told you, anything to the zero power is gonna be what? It's gonna be one. Now we got two to the third power, okay? So we hit two, enter, three, y, the x. Some of you are those mathematicians. You're gonna do two times two times two. Because 2 to the 3rd power means 2 times 2 times 2. And we get the number 8. And that's out of there. We got another 4. We got another 4 right here. So we're going to write that 4. We're going to write it straight down. We got 2 to the 1st power. Any number to the 1st power is the same number. It means we basically only have 1, 2. So that means we got a 2 right here. Let me write that 2 down here. Okay, that one's gone. Now we hit 4, enter. 0, y to the x. And I see my answer coming up right here is going to be the number one. So what's my mode right here? It's going to be one. So you write down the number one, right? And we're done, right? Wrong. This one does not say integer. You got to write your three significant digits. So we're going to write 1.00 times 10 to the zero. Or straight up, we write the number 1.00. We call it a day. We got some points added to our score. And now we know what the mode is, all right? So sometimes we do these problems, we think they're hard. But we can always use our good friend Mr. Calculator here, go ahead and answer these problems. But we gotta know the, the vocabulary. Once you know the vocabulary, it's super easy, all right? Let's go ahead and do this problem. We're gonna write the mode. We're gonna write the mode. As you can see, the mode is the number that appears the what? It is the number that appears the most. Mode, most. Easy way to remember that. So we got the number 10. So I'm gonna write, cross out 10. I'm gonna write the number 10. I'm gonna write it right here in the middle. Okay, we got number five. Let's go ahead and write down five. Square root of 10, square root of 10. Okay, so I'm gonna approximate, I'm gonna put 10, enter. I'm not even gonna hit enter, I'm gonna hit 10 square root. And I got about 3.16, all right? I got 3.16. So that one's gone. Five squared, so I hit five, enter, two y the x, or if you know your multiplication tables, five squared is five times five, which is? 25 all right we got 25 right there we got 25 right there notice how i'm putting it in an order okay i'm kind of estimating where these numbers are going to go right here i'm kind of still putting them in order from least to greatest but i'm kind of estimating where they're going to go the cube root of 125 now this one i'm going to go ahead and write it out for you cube root of 125 because cube root of 125 is 125 inside of a radical which is that little symbol i just wrote most people think it's a square root and it would be if I did not put the number that belongs there, I put a number three because this is the cube root. So we're gonna hit 125, enter. We're gonna hit three, yellow, y rooted of x right there. The y with the x root right there. It's usually above the square root button, but different calculators have different things, okay? And as we can see, we hit yellow show, we get 5.000, or just five. We just write the number five right there. So cube root of 125 is five. And the square root of 25. Now, again, if you know that mental math, you might be able to tell me right now what the square root of 25 is. What number times itself gives us 25? Well, if you don't know, we go ahead and write square root of 25. But notice, we do not, we do not put a number inside that radical, inside that root. What I mean by the radical? The radical is this crazy looking symbol right there. All right, that's called a radical. And when you put a number in there, it changes the root. When there's no number, we think it's square root, all right? So square root of 25 is actually, yet again, another five. So what's our mode? It's gonna be five, but you better not put five point, you better not put five, you better put 5.00 times 10 to the zero or 5.00 in standard form. Three significant digits all the way, easy work, easy work. Let's keep it going, keep it going. Look, I hope you understand what the mode is. More problems, more practice, 
easier work. All right, so let's write them in order. I got a two right there. I got another two. So two looks like the mode so far. Then I got a three right there. All right, so we put the three. Then I got a what? One, two, three fives. After I got my fives, I got one six, one seven, and one eight. Look, when you get good with this, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to do all this work. You could already see our answer is going to be five. But if you just leave it like that, it's wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. You better put that point zero zero, or you better put 5.00 times 10 to the zero, because that's the correct format. All right, let's keep it going. All right, so we got some daily quiz scores right here. As you can see, daily quiz scores for three weeks. Man, that's a lot of quizzes to be taken in three weeks, man. That looks like one per day, easily. Well, let's calculate the mode for those three weeks, all right? So, as you can see, we can start making some estimations right here. We can start saying, you know what, what number do you think think looks like the most? Well, I'll go ahead and go with nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Dude, there's already seven nines here. That's a lot of nines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven nines. That's a lot of nines. That looks like our mode already. But let's see what we uh, what else we got. Let's count our tens. One, two, three, four. So is 10 going to be our mode? No. Nine's already the one that appears the most so far. Let's keep it going. Let's count our eight. One, two, three. And honestly, eight's not going to do it, and neither is this seven. We got our answer. What's our answer? We're going to write nine. But you better not write all those nines. We're just going to write one nine. And not 9.00. Because as you can see, it's integer. You write the decimal, and it's wrong. So you better not write that decimal, all right? Let's keep it going. So now we got number 13 right here, and it says, what is the mode of the following list of numbers? All right, let's go ahead and write them. Let's write them in some order. We got four, boom, cross it out. We got eight, boom, cross it out. We got the square root of 16. Remember, square root of 16 looks like that. So I'm gonna type in square root 16. Wait a second, if you know what number, if you know your multiplication tables, you might be able to tell me immediately that that's the number four, because four times four is 16. Square root of two, all right, we hit two square root, and that one you don't know, because there is no one number that makes a square root. So square root of 16 is about 1.41, rounded to 1.41, so we just leave it alone. We're gonna write 1.41 because our proper form is only three decimal places. Now we're going to put 2 squared, 2 squared, 2 squared means 2 to the second power. So 2 enter, 2 y the x, or 2 blue x squared. But if you know what 2 times 2 is, we get another 4. You're probably already going to guess what our answer is going to be, but we got to check it out. 2 cubed, 2 cubed is 2 to the third power, all right? 2 to the third power, so we hit enter, 2 enter, 3 y the x. Or you can do that mental math, 2 times 2 times 2, and that actually makes the number... 8. So we're getting closer to this. 8 to the 0 power. So you might remember that. 8 to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is... 1. 1. Yes. Good old 1. Good old 1. So we got 1 right there. It doesn't look like this is going to be it. And 4 to the 1st power. 4 to the 1st power means we only got 1 4. 4 times, well, nothing. I mean, not nothing, not 0, but just basically 4 by itself. And that means we have 4 4, so our answer is going to be 4. But you better put 4.00 times 10 to the 0. Now, let's say, Mr. Delgado, you didn't know how to write that correctly. I would just write 4 in my calculator and then hit enter, and it shows you the correct form. I hit 4 enter, 4.00 times 10 to the 0. Or you could write standard form anytime you got times 10 to the 0. The decimal doesn't change places. And we just write it like that, ladies and gentlemen. Easy, easy. So now we got to do one that I really like right here. He's going to be talking about something called a Fibonacci. Fibonacci sequence, all right? We still do the mode. And we got to do the first 10 numbers, all right? I like the Fibonacci sequence because what the Fibonacci sequence is, it's a little pattern, okay? Let me bust it out. Let me bust it out first, okay? I'm going to bust out the pattern. And then I'm going to see if you guys can figure out the pattern, okay? So what we're doing here is I have a Fibonacci sequence, well, at least the pattern, memorized, okay? And I'll explain the pattern to you right now. But the pattern's pretty easy, all right? The pattern's pretty easy. The first two numbers of the Fibonacci sequence is always a 1 and then another 1. 
But now after the Fibonacci sequence, we got to see some beautiful things happen. We get to see some beautiful things. Now I don't know how many numbers that is. Let me let me count. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, that is ten. Wow, I'm pretty surprised that I got it right on the dot. Because we're looking only for the first ten. Now, if you don't see the pattern, I'll explain it to you, okay? We always start with the number one right there. And another number one. But the third number and every following number after it uses the previous two numbers. Look at this one. Two is one plus one. All right, that's what that is. That's what that is. Two is one plus one. Notice, three is two plus one. All right, that's what that is right there. That's what that is. How about five? Is three plus two. That's where it comes from. How about eight? It's five plus three. It's a crazy little pattern we got there, that Fibonacci sequence. How about 13 is eight plus five. That's how we get 13. How about 21? Eight and 13 combined to make 21 when you add them. And that's how you figure out the Fibonacci sequence patterns, all right? But since we're looking for the mode, there's only one number that appears more than once, and that's the first one. Because one and two, sorry, the first position and the second position still have the number one. So we actually have two ones. So our correct answer is, and hey, let me write this a little nicer. I kind of wrote down a little sloppy, and we don't want to write too sloppy here. It's going to be the number one. You better not put 1.00 because then it's not an integer. At least it has a decimal. And it's wrong format, and then they would count it wrong. We just got to put the number one, okay? So that's mode. That's mode in a nutshell, all right? Now we got another one we got to look at. We got another one. Now we've been practicing this kind of already. We've been practicing putting numbers in order from least to greatest already. So we're going to go ahead and continue to do this right here. We're going to continue to do this. We're going to go ahead and bust out right here. We're going to bust out. See, I'm changing my little color right here. We're going to calculate the median right here. That's what we're going to do. We're going to calculate the median. Now, you may ask yourself, Mr. Ogato, I don't know what the median is. I don't know. Well, I'm going to show you what the median is, okay? The median is actually real easy right here. The median is going to be the number. Notice I'm putting that number symbol again in the middle median is synonymous i'm using that good vocabulary right there synonymous synonymous meaning pretty much the same it's like a synonym of the middle all right so what we got to do here is find the first 11 prime numbers we're gonna have to figure out the first 11 prime numbers and then we're gonna have to figure out the number right Boom, right in the middle, all right? So let's go ahead and do this, okay? First prime number, two, then three, then five, then seven. Not nine, but then 11. 13, not 15. Every multiple of five is not a prime number anymore, but 17 sure is. So is 19. Now, I got to count them. Let me count them. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I still need three more. Now, 21 divisible by three. But 23 sure is, not 25, not 27, but 29 sure is. And some people would count and actually think we're done. But if we're looking at our work right now, we're seeing what we got going on, it's not done. Because that's only 10 numbers, as you can see. So we're missing one more, and that last one we're missing is 31. So now we're going to go ahead and find the numbers right in the middle, okay? So what I like to do is I like to put little X's underneath the ends. The ends right here. Oh, wow, man, I made that 31 look a different color right there. I didn't even see that, that three. But in any case, we're going to find the ends right here. And we're just going to keep working our way, working our way towards the center, okay? So I cross one out from the left, cross one out from the right, cross one out from the right, cross one out from the left. And as you can see, there is only one number left right in the middle. And that number is 13, 13. You know what? I completely forgot. Look, I don't know what happened to that other number. I might have undid it when I was trying to change my pen color. But it was actually number one. So let me go ahead and put that back in there, all right? But see, that's how we do the median. It's a number that is in the, boom, middle. Right in the middle. As you can see, it's right there, that 13 over there. You can pop it up and see it over there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one right here. Let's keep it going, all right? So what is the median of the following list of numbers? Now, let me show you something right now. How do people get this wrong? They already start canceling stuff out. Left and right, left and right, left and right, left and right. And they think the answer is five. But is this in order from least to greatest? It sure ain't. And that's why 
we are not well i mean maybe we could get it right i don't know but we gotta put these numbers in order from least to greatest so we're gonna start with the number two cross that thing out we're gonna do another two because i see another two right there then we're gonna put the number three right there do we have any more threes no so we got any fours no but we got a five right there we got a five we got another five right there we got another five we got another five right there and then we got ourselves a six then we got ourselves a seven and last but not least mr eight mr eight why is six afraid of seven because seven eight nine you know what i'm saying yeah that's a good joke from my time old school yeah i bust that one out all right sorry ladies and gentlemen sometimes i gotta tell you a little bit of my old days that's a good joke though that man joke yeah you Tell it somebody safe from Mr. 500. You know what I'm saying? I didn't make the joke up. I heard it a lot. I bet you it was around for a lot of time, okay? But you know, it's a good joke. 789. Ha 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 ha. You funny. You funny. All right. Sorry about that. Let's go ahead and take a look at these, okay? So, 2 and 8. 7 and 2. 3 and 6. And as you can see, we would have gotten lucky if we did it wrong because our answer is still 5. But you better not put 5. You better put 5.00. And if you didn't know how to write it correctly, we put 5 and you hit enter in your calculator. 5.00 or scientific notation form 5.00 times 10 to the 0. That's how we do it. All right, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. So what we got to do here is now calculate the median, right? That's what we see. And not just median, but we got to know that vocabulary again. Palindromes, same forwards as backwards. Same from left to right and right to left that's how we do it okay greater than what greater than 10 and less than 100 pretty much all the two digits again so let's write them out we got 11 22 33 44 55 66 77 88 and last but not least 99 and now we're gonna go through them we're gonna go through them and we're gonna go ahead and find the one in the middle. Cancel out that one and that one. Keep going from the ends and work your way to the middle. Easiest way to find the median. And we got our answer right there. Our answer seems to be 55. So let's go ahead and write it down. You better not put 55.0. You do that, game over. Wrong. And we're not here to do wrong stuff. What we're here to do is get right stuff. You better leave it as 55, no decimal, okay? That'd be incorrect format. Don't write that scientific notation. Don't write 5.50 times 10 to the first. You better put 55, okay? All right, next problem. Let's take a look. We're going to calculate the median of a set that contains the first 10 prime numbers. Now, we're going to see something real cool that happens here. This is the first problem that I can see we're going to have a little issue right here. And it's because we're actually only looking at 10. Man, a little issue come up, so we're going to see what happens, all right? Let's take a look. First prime number, 2, then 3, then 5, then 7, then 9. I'm just joking. Nine's divisible by 3. You got to remember your prime numbers. But 11 sure is a prime number. So is 13, not 15, but 17 sure is, and so is 19. Okay, how many numbers is that so far? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, we need two more. Not 21, but 23. Not 25, not 27, but 29. Now we got our 10 prime numbers, as you can see. We're going to work our way to the middle, all right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Whoa, buddy. We don't just have one number right in the middle. We got two. There are two numbers in the middle, man. Woo-wee. What are we going to do right here? Are we going to write them both down, right? Wrong. You better not write both of them down. What we're going to have to do right here is the first time we're going to see a little bit of the actual math taking place. What we're going to do is actually find the average of the two middle numbers. The mean. Just like Mr. Delgado right here. I just joking, I ain't that mean. Well, sometimes I am. They call me mean, Mr. Delgado, because I like that statistics, and that's a mean thing, Mr. Delgado. Anyways, the average is basically you're going to add the numbers and divide by how many numbers we added. In this case, we're going to add 11 plus 13. 
And since we're adding two numbers, we're gonna divide by two. So that's where we have to use that math and bust out our fancy calculator. We can do 11 enter, 13 plus, two divide. And now we got our answer. You better not put 1.20 times 10 to the first though you do that, we get this wrong. Because as you can see, it's an integer problem. We're gonna have to hit yellow show on our calculator and we're gonna write the number 12. Now some people also like to think about it this way. Since it's the median, we're looking for the number right in the middle of those two right there. What's right in the middle of 11 and 13? Well, 12, that's right, that's how we do it. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So that's what we're gonna have to do here. Now really, this next problem is very similar to the problem we just did. But instead of looking at the first 10, it asks for the first dozen. Now, of course, it's pretty difficult if you don't know what a dozen is. But the way I remember is those dozen eggs that I like to eat, as well as those dozen donuts. Mm, 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 I love myself some donuts. Hopefully, you do too. So let's go ahead and get this problem done. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23. 29 now some people don't know the rest of them but you know what the rest of them you got to understand the rest of them we're gonna go ahead and put what 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 31 you got it yeah buddy 33 right wrong it's a palindrome divisible by 11 at least that one is that palindrome is so 31's not gonna work and that's sorry, so sorry 33 is not gonna work 35 divisible by 5 37 Looks like that's where we at, 37, you know? So now we got our 12 prime numbers. Let's go ahead and use our method of canceling out our endpoints, our ends. And we're gonna find out what's right in the middle. As you can see, I'm moving my way towards the middle, towards the median, and now we see that there's two numbers left in the middle. So let's go ahead and get 13 and 17. We gotta find out right in the middle of that. Well. There's lots of ways you could do it, but of course the easiest way would be 13 plus 17 divided by 2. Okay, that's the easiest way to do it, all right? Now, of course, some people like to make number lines, so we could do 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. And notice how we have 13 as an endpoint and 17 as the endpoint. We call it the minimum maximum. And now we could do that same technique there. And we could do that same technique there, and we find out our answers right there. But really, the mathematical way would be 13 plus 17, so we hit 13 and 17 plus, two divide. And now we got ourselves our answer right here. In this case, our answer is exactly what we got right there. It's 1.50 times 10 to the first, but you don't wanna write that. You wanna hit yellow show, and we write 15. And now we got our answer, and now we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and get it. Let's go ahead and keep going. So in this problem right here, we're gonna see some actual different numbers right here. We got, like a lot of these are pretty easy. We got five, okay? So we're gonna write them in order, five. Then we got the number eight right here. So we're gonna write eight. Now, here's the deal. You might not know what five pi is, but five pi just means we're gonna get this five right there. That five, you see that five over here? You see that five? You see that five right there? And we're gonna multiply it by pi. So hit five, enter. Yellow pi, multiply. And we get, you hit yellow show, so I'm gonna write it off to the side. Five pi is the same as about 15.7 ish, okay? It's about ish. So you know what, I'm gonna change that equal sign right there. Let's go ahead and delete that equal sign. I don't like it. Ooh, I deleted the five too. I didn't mean to do that, but it's okay. I'll go ahead and write five. And we're gonna go ahead and put that approximately symbol. Cause it's about 15.7 ish. But let's go ahead and now continue putting in order. So I got 13 next. Then I got five pi. Notice how I wrote it as five pi, not 15.7 ish, because five pi is what we're looking at. After five pi, we got 22. After 22, we're gonna go ahead and put 52. Then we got 72. And then we got 101 over here, all right? Now that we wrote them in order from least to greatest, let's go ahead and use our method technique of crossing out our max and minimums. And as we continue crossing out the max and minimum, we'll have a new max and minimum. And as you can see, we're gonna have to add two numbers here. Now there's really no number in the middle like we did in this problem. You can't figure it out like this. That method right here doesn't work when you have a number like five pi. 
So now what we really got to do is hit 5 pi plus 22. And since we add, now somebody may say, sir, that's three numbers because 5, because pi, and because 22 is another number. Uh, maybe. But 5 pi isn't really two separate numbers. It's one number put together with that multiplication symbol. So don't think we're going to divide by 3. We're still dividing by 2. Okay, and how can you really tell? Because all our numbers in the set, all our numbers in the set are separated by a comma. You see those commas? Those commas tell you that between those commas is only one number, okay? But I can see, I've had some kids in the past tell me, Mr. God, I divided by three. And I look at them and I'm like, well, nice try there, but it's actually only two numbers for the meeting. The most you're ever gonna add is two numbers. So I hit five, pi, multiply. Then I hit 22 plus. And right now I'm looking, I'm looking at 3.77 times 10 to the first. So hopefully that's what you got too. But then we got to hit 2 divide, and now I'm looking at the right answer we're going to write down. It doesn't say integer, because this is not an integer answer. It's a crazy number if you hit yellow show, because we got pi in one of the answers, okay? We had to use pi, so it's not going to be an integer answer. It's 1.89 times 10 to the first. Or if you want to, 18.9. Both methods are correct, all right, ladies and gentlemen? All right. Let's keep it going. Let's keep this beautiful work going here. You know what I'm saying? So we got to calculate the median. Medi I like median. Median is a great one. Of the first 10. Uh-oh, composite numbers. Whoop, whoop. Composite number is a number divisible by more than two numbers. For example, nine. Nine is divisible by one by nine and by three that's a composite number it's basically any number other than prime except for the number one one is only divisible by one number one that's why one is the loneliest number that you sorry about that i gotta keep my auditions for broadway on another day okay Hey, if you're looking, to, you're looking for an actor right here. You're looking for somebody who can sing. Call me up, Mr. 500. Maybe I get something for you. All right. Ding. But anyways, let's go ahead and do this math. You know what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen. So first 10 composite numbers. Well, we're gonna go ahead and hey, but wait a second. They gotta be greater than 10. So I was gonna write down number four, but is four greater than 10? Mm 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 mm. So we ain't gonna write down four. Hmm. How about 12? That sure is. 13 isn't. That's a prime number. 14 is. 15 is divisible by 5. So that's why it is a prime number. I apologize. It is not a prime number. It's a composite number. That's right. I got to make sure my vocabulary is on point. All right. Let's see. 15. How about 16? Basically, every even number is now going to be a composite. Okay. Then we not 17. That's prime. But 18 sure is. Not 19. That's prime. 20 is. 21 is divisible by 3. That's why it's prime. Okay, let me count. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, we're getting close, though. 22. Not 23, though. 24. And 25. Hey, yo, Patrick. You don't want to know what's funnier than 24? 25. All right, sorry about that. I like me that SpongeBob. It's always a good episode. Maybe I'll find it one of these days and I'll show it to you. You know what I'm saying? Throw it in one of these clips. Throw it in one of these little episodes right here. 24. Hee 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 hee. All right, sorry about that. Anyways, let me add them up. Let me just make sure I got them. I got 1, 12, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and we got 10. So now we're going to find the median. So let me go ahead and start crossing out my endpoints. 1, 2, 3, 4. And we just keep working our way towards the middle. Since we have an even amount of numbers looked at, that's why there's going to be two numbers we add. There's not just going to be one in the middle. It's going to be two numbers in the middle. In this case, we got 18 and 20. That one is going to be pretty easy. You could probably figure out the middle number is going to be, well, what's right in the middle of 18 and 20? Is 19. But we want to use that mathematical way because we never know when that mathematical way is going to catch us by surprise. So we got to make sure we use that mathematical way. As you can see, it says integer. We do not want to get caught off guard and write 1.90 times 10 to the first. We want to write 19. And we got ourselves an answer right here. Good answer. Good answer. Let's keep it going. Median of the set of numbers that contains all the prime numbers. 
less than 20. Well, we've been practicing this all day, so let's get it popping. Two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, not 15, but 17 and 19. All numbers less than 20. Let's go ahead and keep it. One, there you go. Let's cross out, let's do our endpoints. Let's cancel our endpoints. Now we got seven and 11 in the middle. So we're gonna get seven added to 11. Seven plus 11 divided by two, divided by two. Let's bust out our calculator. Seven, enter 11 plus. Notice, do we see, oh, I almost was gonna write 1.80 times 10 to the first. But we gotta divide by two. No integer. Do you see integer written here? Do you see integer? No, you don't. So you better write 9.00 times 10 to the zero. Or of course, 9.00. That's the way to do it, my friends. Let's keep it going. Now this one right here does involve you actually using calculator to convert stuff, okay? So I'm gonna do my little number line here. I'm not, but not necessarily number line. I'm gonna go ahead and write these numbers in order. I'm gonna try to. Now one of them I know is probably gonna be first. It's gonna be that one. Seven to the zero is the number one. So I'm gonna put the number one down here because that's seven to the zero, okay? Then we're gonna go ahead and check out, let's see, let's see, pi. Pi I already know is about 3.14. Pi is right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put pi over here, okay? Let's see if there's anything in between. 32 is pretty big, 32, so we're gonna put 32 over here, okay? And I know eight, I know eight is bigger than pi, so we'll put it like over here. So notice 1.87, 1 1.87 is pretty easy to calculate. It's gonna be in between one and pi. And I'm gonna put a little comma right there just in case we get something else that we could put here. Now pi is about roughly 3.14. Let's go ahead and put square root of 10. 10 square root, uh-oh. It's 3.16, right? When we hit it, it's roughly. So it's gonna come after pi, okay? Now, next number we could take a look at is square root of 24, okay? So we're gonna hit 24 square root and it's about 4.90, 4.90. So that's gonna come after the square root of 10. Notice how the square root of 25 is five. So it makes sense, it makes sense. That's gonna be between 10 and eight because five, square root of 25 is a little bit bigger than square root of 24, okay? So right there. And of course, last but not least, well, four squared. We got four squared right here. So we're gonna hit four, square it. Or if you know your times table, four times four is a 16. And now we got our numbers here. Let's go ahead and do our endpoints. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. And now we have two numbers in the middle, two numbers, these two numbers right there, those two. So what are we gonna do with those two? We're gonna do square root of 10, plus square root of 24 divided by two. And that's how we can get our answer. So we hit 10 square root, 24 square root, add it to divide. And guess what I got? 4.03 times 10 to the zero, or 4.03. Both make, it, make the answer correct. And that's gonna get you correct answers, okay? I like this. Talking about that Fibonacci sequence again. And just so you know, Mr. Delgado wasn't lying. It's actually telling us that the first eight terms of the Fibonacci sequence starting with one, one, remember one always goes twice. And then we got the number two, and then we got the number three. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. If you didn't know the rule for the Fibonacci, you might think the next number is four, but it ain't four. It's three plus two, which is five. What's the next number gonna be? Three plus five, which is eight. Next number, five plus eight, 13. So how many do we have so far? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got one more. So we're gonna do 13 plus eight, 21. So now we're gonna go ahead and find that median. Do that end points. Do our end points right here. End points time, end points. So now we got three and five. So let's go ahead and get three and five, put them together, three plus five divided by two. 3 plus 5 divided by 2. Now, some of you already could probably do this without a calculator, and I hope you noticed this. A lot of these problems could be done without a calculator. A lot of this is just set up. It's just setting up the problem to make sure you know how to interpret that thing. And I'm helping you with the setup. The calculator, this bad boy was barely even used. I mean, a little bit. There's some of the problems we got to do the math formulas for, but and maybe conversions, we gotta convert some of those numbers into numbers we understand. Because a lot of us don't understand square root of 10, but once we hit square root of 10 of the calculator, we know roughly it approximately 3.16, and you know, whatever, those kind of things. But calculator's not really about this type of problem. It's about understanding what the words mean, okay?
Okay, so you gotta remember that. But if you understand that vocabulary, easy work. So let's go ahead and do last but not least, last problem right here. Remember, we only put four because it's an integer. We don't wanna put 4.00. Last problem is a problem that I've barely ever seen. And it actually doesn't have to do with range, mode, or median. It actually has to do a little bit more with something called mean. More specifically, the arithmetic mean or the average. But I threw it in this one right here because it's gonna be a little bit of that mathematical warm up. Okay, we've done the average already. When we added both of the middle numbers and divided by two for the medians, that was a little average. And that's what this one's kinda be about. But it's gonna be a little bit of an average, like a median, but we're gonna do it with the maximum and minimum value, okay? That's what that mid-range means. So I'll write it down, because we're looking at the mid-range in these problems, okay? So the mid-range is the maximum plus the minimum and since we're adding two numbers we're gonna divide by two that's the mid-range okay it's kind of like the median but instead of the two middle numbers you get the two extreme numbers the ones on the edges all right it's kind of like why that's why they call it the range and the mid because it's like a median and range put together okay so let's go ahead and take a look at these numbers cell phones at the store that joe was looking at joy was looking at i said joe mr ogato you gotta read better. All right, Mr. 500, let's get it pop. Let's looking at cost 85, so I'm gonna go ahead and put 85 right here, comma. 110, okay. Hey, I like this problem. They went ahead and put the numbers in order, man, oh man. We got a $250 phone, and we got a $550 phone. Jeez, look at that $85 phone, man. If I wanna save that money, I'll get that $85 phone. Maybe no screen, you know? As long as it makes calls, it's still a phone, right? But let's not talk about my frugality. Let's talk about the mathematics of this mid-range problem. So what's my maximum? We're going to get 550. What's that minimum? We're going to get 85. So we're going to add them. And now, last step, we're going to divide them by 2. And guess what? That is the mid-range, okay? This right here is the mid-range, okay? So let's do it. 550 and... 85 plus 2 divide. Now notice, some people get this bad boy wrong. You're going to put 3.18 times 10 to the second, and you would get it very wrong because this is not a regular problem. You just saw me circle it. It's a money problem. It's a big, big dollar bill sign problem. And that, you're going to have to hit yellow show, yellow show. And you're going to have to put the dollars and the cents. $317.50. That's what you're going to have to do for this bad boy, ladies and gentlemen. But once you get this problem done, then you got yourself some of that muscle being built right there. But not that muscle, not that bicep muscle, that mind muscle. Because we're getting more inside that head, and we're going to get better and better every single day. So you know me, Mr. 500, doing it big. And hopefully you, with practicing these problems, going to do it real big. Get a lot better and pick up those scores. And have a little bit more understanding about these math problems right here, ladies and gentlemen. Because at the end of the day, this is your education. And hopefully, you're going to get real educated by Mr. 500. That's right. That's what it is. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. So I hope you have yourself a fantastic day. I know I always do when I'm working with you guys. So have a good one. Enjoy it. And take a look at that excellence in action. And it's just ahead. And you're on that road. All right, ladies and gentlemen.